using XSLT to sort nodes. We'll talk about sorting and we'll talk about adding attributes. <coughs> um, so yeah, uh, we've seen the for each loop. Okay, cool. Uh, if we want to go ahead and sort things, it turns out there's a sort tag built in. Okay, that's kind of nice. Uh, let's go look at the result of sorting things. Uh, we're just going to sort by decreasing height here in this example. Uh, and sure enough, we see that the height really is decreasing all the way down to the, the value that had zero in it. Um, <clears throat> what is the XSLT that created this? Uh, we had the for each statement that we saw before. And then the first statement inside the for each is an XSL sort tag. A select to tell us out of all the nodes we're sorting over, remember that this select statement returned a node set with seven, seven, no, seven wonders. Um, for each wonder, go ahead and select, uh, sort it based on selecting the height, uh, or equal either ascending or descending. Data type can be number or text. Okay. By the way, uh, does it matter data type is number or text? See if you can go ahead and uh, pause and think about a particular uh, two strings that matter or two numbers that would matter if you're sorting by number or text. Uh, in particular, when I look at 455 and 384, uh, if I do them alphabetically, 384 comes before 455, and I sort them numerically, 384 becomes 400, before 455. So I'll go ahead and pause and think about two values that would make a difference on. Yeah, the, uh, if you take something like uh, 384 and just 45, alphabetically 384 comes before 45, but numerically it comes after. So when the strings are different length, then that matters. You knew that. Okay, um, <clears throat> great. So that's all there is to it. XSL colon sort. Well, let me just point out how weird this is. Uh, you put this tag inside the for each, but it's affecting the the for each. So this tag is affecting things outside of the tag, just above the tag, which most tags don't do that. Most tags, the, that's why we have these tags, these trees. You, you affect only yourself and the subtree, not your sibling nodes. The, the sort tag goes ahead and affects the, the parent and sibling nodes. That's just odd. Okay. Um, why is that? It partly comes from, again, this commitment that XSLT had to them, to making their programs themselves be XML. And they, then the source gets a little bit uh, tricky about where to put a sort statement. But, okay. Um, so they do it that way. It's a little bit weird, but it works just fine. It's pretty easy and pretty intuitive. Okay. So fair enough. Um, <clears throat> Creating attributes. Okay, so let's go ahead and here's what I want to do. I want to go ahead and have a page where instead of just listing like the Colossus of Rhodes in a table like we did before, uh, I want to go, oops, I want to go and make this actually be a link. Okay, so how would I make it be a link? Well, I'd have an A tag with a, a href attribute. Okay. So go ahead and pause and just sort of come up with yourself the little snippet of XSLT you would use inside the loop. Uh, and to get us started, remember what we had before. We had something and we had a TR tag and then a TD tag. And then inside the, what was inside that TD tag, I guess we made it strong. Uh, we went ahead and said XSL colon value of select equal name. And that's what gra grabbed Great Pyramid of Giza out of this. And this whole thing was inside a XSL colon for each. Um, okay. Uh, so go ahead and just, and there, you know, we had whatever pull out the location and stuff like that. Uh, so go ahead and just modify this. How do you modify this to make this Great Pyramid of Giza and uh, a link to Great, to not only say Great Pyramid of Giza, but also be a link to Great Pyramid of Giza. 
and we'll ignore for the fact that we can't have spaces inside URLs. But imagine that the URL we want to go to is greatpyramidofgiza.html. Okay, go ahead and pause and give that a try of changing this text here. So yeah, uh, it starts out, you know, like, oh, sure, nothing, no problem at all. Uh, why is Barlow making a big deal about this? We start this, we'll go ahead and have angle bracket A, H, href equal, and now the name, and then inside, and I'll close my A tag, and inside I'll go ahead and do this, random this stuff. Now, wait a minute, we have a problem here. I'm gonna, I know what I want to do. Seems all good and well. This is not valid XML. Why not? I have a strong tag. I have an A, open the A tag, href equal. Ooh, I cannot open another tag in the middle of an href attribute. That's not allowed. You can't, you know, tags <coughs> have to be properly nested. Within tag, you have the open tag and then it's attributes. And then in its body, you can put sub tags in there, but you can't have a sub tag. In, yeah. Ugh. So this is a no-go. This is another place where uh, XSLT's commitment to having their programs themselves be XML is going to force us into a really weird solution. So, uh, okay, uh, so what's a, a poor programmer to do? Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and make an A tag and leave it empty for now, okay? Uh, or put it this way, we can make an A tag whose body is what we want, because that we can go ahead and do. But we don't have any way of, I need to go say, hey, I need to set an href attribute for that, okay? And the way we're going to do that is with an, uh, a new tag, xsl colon attribute. So we're going to have the A tag, and then inside the A tag, we're going to have a xsl colon attribute tag. Why am I not doing this in Emacs where I get the tags to auto close? Okay. So yeah, great. I'm going to have something along these lines here. Um, so in addition to the stuff that I want inside the A tag, I also have the XSL colon attribute and then name equal href. And now here, inside the body of the XSL attribute tag, is we're going to put the value for the attribute of the enclosing tag. Uh, okay, so here's where I'll go ahead and copy and paste this thing again. Okay, so put some spaces in now. In practice, I would not want to actually put any spaces here. This is a common little mistake. Um, I mean, it looks better. It's a little bit more readable if I break up this XSL attribute with this thing in the middle of it. What does that do? That would say href, it would be the equivalent of href equal, quote, space, Colossus of Rhodes space, um, which is not what I wanted. And by the way, I wanted uh, this.html, so I could just easily go ahead and .html here. Yeah, I don't want a space after the L in HTML, and I don't want a space at the beginning of it, so I want to do that. Um, gosh, you know, something I mentioned before is, uh, briefly that if there was a space in our, the thing we want to make the URL out of, uh, H, uh, we might want to go ahead and sort of encode this here, um, and turn the space into a percent to zero, and that way the, that entity can be parsed easily and it's a little bit clearer, um, what's going on. Okay, uh, so we can actually go ahead and do that as well. Uh, where did our, what's our sorting example? Okay. So uh, here's one way we can do it. We can call translate. Okay, we'll talk about XSLT functions in the next video, but uh, here's a little peek ahead. Uh, rather than just saying uh, value of equal name, I can say value and select equal name. I can say select, and the thing that's inside the select can actually be any full-fledged expression, not just a single variable name or field name. Uh, so in particular, I can say, hey, translate name, uh, replace any spaces with, 
a hyphen or a percent to zero. I could do that as well. Um, actually, translate is a little bit more limited. Translate only turns one character into one other character. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with actually turning spaces into hyphens. I'm not upset about that. So that's a, a reasonable uh, convention to use. Of course, my file names might need to respect that as well. Okay, so there you are. That's how we go ahead. And if you need to use XSLT to compute an attribute value, the way you do it is actually leave the attribute off and then inside the tag add this XSL colon attribute tag in there, do the computation in there. This is, an, why did I put this next to the for each loop? It's another example of the where we put this tag, this tag here, this tag is affecting its parent. Okay, and that, again, that's just sort of counter to the whole idea of XML and organizing things as trees. But uh, there you are. So, and if you look in the documentation, they actually go ahead and uh, name some of these. Uh, the, the, in the documentation, they'll say, oh, yeah, this particular XSL colon attribute is a something like context sensitive, context aware tag or something like that. So, uh, if you see that term, that's what they're talking about. It, it's not working the way XML you would expect it to. Uh, this tag is affecting its parent or its siblings. So, okay. So I think uh, we're good. Uh, I'll finish off with one little shortcut here. Uh, and I'll, this shortcut happens to save us the effort of using this attribute sometimes. Um, if you just want to go ahead and do a value of and select a field, okay, you can go ahead and embed that without actually needing to even go into an XML colon value of statement. You can use curly bracket uh, and inside the curly bracket, you can go ahead and uh, grab a field. So uh, in particular, uh, this will grab the name attribute. I should, I should get back to double check on this. Um, anyway, uh, you can actually go ahead and use this and save yourself a little bit of effort. Um, I think it's worth knowing the full form partly to see the repercussions of this choice of hey, our code is going to be XML. Sounded cool, leads to weird tags, and then things that are not XML at all. This little shorthand here is not XML at all. Okay, uh, templates are mentioned in the book and they're mentioned in the code. I'm not really going to talk about them because uh, templates are a, a form of writing a helper function and calling the helper, which in general is one of the most fundamental concepts of computing, and I would stress that a lot. It's weird in XSLT. Um, the way you call it, and so I don't even want to get into that. Um, what I will talk about next is XSLT functions and XPath. And you know, again, I'm just going to mention uh, I'm more concerned about XPath than XSLT. XSLT is kind of, XSLT is kind of interesting, but not um, a huge important topic. XPath is a much more common technology. Uh, XSLT is showing us a few interesting ideas uh, XPath will actually use in other libraries and other languages. Okay.